Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mr. Weinkoff speaking with Embrace Tutoring Educational Services and today we're going to be reviewing the SAT Math Practice Test 8 section 4 questions 1 through 10 within this video. And this video will cover the detailed explanations of questions 1 through 10, but we will also offer another video of more of the kind of the strategies and the fast pace to going involved in using the answer choices. So I encourage you to watch both videos to really develop your overall understanding of the test. Question one states one pound of grapes costs two dollars. So I have one pound equals two dollars. At this rate, how many dollars or x dollars will c pounds of grapes cost? So if I have c pounds of grapes, so if I'm going to set this up to be one pound over my two dollars. And this is going to be equivalent in keeping my dollar sign in the, in the same side of the, the fraction. And here up top, I'm going to have C pounds because that's what I'm trying to, how many dollars will C pounds of grapes cost? So if I cross multiply, I'm going to have 2C equals X dollar pounds. And 2C would be my best answer choice given my X pounds. So 2 a is my best answer choice for number one. Question two states, Tracy collects cells and trades figurines and she tracks the number of figurines in her collection on the graph below. So here's her graph, time is x, axis number of figurines is y. On what interval did the number of figurines decrease the fastest? So decrease the fastest would be in reference to going down, right? Number of figurines is on my y-axis. So where does it look like she's decreasing the fastest? So you're either between this notch here or you're between this notch. And it appears as though, since they're not giving you any values, that between three and four is the greatest or the steepest decline. So C is gonna be my best answer to number two. Question three states, in a random sample of 200 cards of a particular model, three have a manufacturing defect. So three out of that 200 have a defect, and the 200 is the, the sample so far. At this rate, how many t of 10,000 cars, so 10,000 total that I have here, how many of the 10,000 cars will have a manufacturing defect? So X number of defected cars out of the 10,000 given the rate of three out of 200, I'm going to cross multiply where I'm going to get 10,000 multiplied by three, which will give me 30,000 altogether, and then I'm going to, on the other side, I'm gonna have 200 times X, so 200 times X, and then, so this would be 30,000 equals 200 multiplied by X. In order to solve an isolate for X, which is the number of cars defected out of that 10,000 group sample, I'm gonna divide by 200, so 30,000 divided by 200. To make matters a little bit easier, I'm gonna tack off some zeros, so really what I have is 300 divided by two, right? By removing the last two zeros for each and 300 divided by two is going to give me 150. So 150 should equal X, three is A and good to go. Question four is asking, the scatter plot above shows data collected on lengths and widths of these petals. So here I have length, here I have width for my X axis and dimensions of the iris petals. A line of best fit, which is this bolded line here going across the graph, it, for the data is also shown. Based on the line of best fit, if the width of an iris petal is 19, meaning that if this is from 16 to 19, then I know 17 is an increment in the middle. And if I kind of approximated the same, then I know 20 would be here, and I know 19 would kind of be where my, where the X is, and I would kind of dot, 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 dot kind of come up, and I would approximate this. It says, what is the predicted length in millimeters of the petal? So my approximation is going to be between 50 and 55. I'm most likely gonna fall in this range here. And looking at my answer choices, it appears that C is gonna be my best possible answer. One other way that I can do this, and, and I didn't do it in this manner, but really what you have based upon the line of best fit is 1.67 x which in this case you can plug in as x so if the width which is x is 19 i can plug this in here right 1.67 times 19 plus 21.1 if i were to add and solve for this now the reason i didn't do this is because one so 1.67 times 19 will take a little bit of time rather than just approximating for 
where this would fall kind of within the graph. C is going to be your best answer. You're more than welcome to plug this in your calculator and you will see that it is approximately going to be 52. Question 5 states, in the figure above, lines L and M are parallel, meaning that these lines here are going to be parallel to each other. Y equals 20, so the angle Y, and Z equals 60. What is the value of X? So here I have X, here I have Z, here I have Y. Well, I know that if these lines are parallel, then I know that this angle here for Y is also going to be congruent to this angle here, um, given the fact that the lines are parallel. And so this angle here for Y means that Y plus X plus Z, so here if I said X or Y, plus x plus z is going to equal 180 degrees. And I know that it's 180 because of the fact that it's a triangle and all sum of triangles within the inner angles is 180 degrees. So if I have y equals 20 degrees, and if I know that my, or I'm try, attempting to solve for my x, and my z is 60 degrees, well, this is 20, this is 60, together this is 80, so I know that this is 80 degrees plus x equals 180. I would subtract 80 from both sides in order to simplify, and I have x equals 100 degrees. So this x here should be 100 degrees, and b is going to be your best answer choice for question number five. Okay, question six. I see already that I have a, a ton of words, so I'm going to try and actually write this out in terms of math terminology as I'm reading it. Two types of tickets were sold for a concert held in an amphitheater. Tickets to sit on a bench during the concert cost $75 each. So bench tickets will, will signify as B. So this should be 75B. And tickets to sit on the lawn during the concert were $40 each. So this would be 40L. I know that B plus L is going to be the total number of ticket organizers of the concert announced 350 tickets total. So thus far, I have... My 350 equals my B plus L, which is my total amount of tickets that have been sold. This is total tickets. And I know they also had sold 19,250. Now this would be, so this is, this is my total tickets increment or my total tickets equation. And my total revenue equation would be with my money values. So here I have my $75 with B, and then I have $40 with L, which would be my lawn seats, and this would be my 19,250. And so these equations should be together in some capacity. Which of the following systems of equations could be used to find the number of tickets for bench seats B and the number of tickets for lawn seats L that were sold for the concert. So, so really what they're asking is, can you identify the system of equations that are provided here? And I wanna, have, I wanna make sure that they match up appropriately. And I can immediately do this by, do I have 75B plus 40L equals this? Well, here I have 75L, right? That doesn't work. Here I have 75B plus 40L equals that. Well, that's my quantity equation. That doesn't work as well. All right, 75B plus 40L equals this. All right, good so far. B plus L equals 350. Is that what, yep, that's what I should be looking for. So six is going to be D. Going back up here just to check, yep, they reversed the quantities, right? Or here actually, it looks like there's, there's not enough. This should be 250, so it's not gonna be A. Okay, D is gonna be your best possible answer. For question seven, in the xy plane, the graph of which of the following equations is a line with a slope of three? So if a slope of three means that you have a rise of three over a run of one, means that your slope should appear in your y equals mx plus b, and this slope should appear before the x, so it should be, it should look like something like y equals three x plus B in some capacity. And here's your answer, C. So seven is gonna be C. For question eight, in the equation above, which of the following is a possible value of X plus one? So here I have X plus one equals two over X plus one. If I were to multiply these together, then, or by cross multiplying, I then have X plus one 
times x plus 1, and that would signify the fact that we're x plus 1 times x plus 1 equals 2. Well, this is then x plus 1 squared and equals 2. Now, you may be tempted to foil this out, but I will say that really all you want to do is just remove the square root to try and figure out what is x plus 1. Because so, so don't foil, because if you foil, then you'll just have to backtrack. But really what you want to do is you just want to square root in order to find what is right what is x plus 1. So if I were to square root this, then I therefore have to square root the other side. And then I get x plus 1, right, because this square root would cancel with the, with the square here, equals the square root of 2. So x plus 1 should equal the square root of 2, and 8 is going to be b, which is your best possible answer. Question 9 states... What is the value of k in centimeters? So questions 9 through 11 are referring to this diagram here, where volume equals 7 pi k to the third over 48. They want you to obviously solve for k in centimeters. So they're giving you this equation, and they're telling you that the total volume that can hold is 473 cubic centimeters. So let's use this informational plug-in in order to solve for k. So if I know, according to question 9, volume equals 7 pi k to the third power of 48, if I know that the total volume is equal to 473 centimeters cubed, then I can cross multiply and I can do 48 times 473. So if I do 7 pi k to the third power equals then 48 times 473, then by multiplying these out, I would then get 22,704, which would give me 7 pi k to the third power. And if I can then divide by 7 pi to both sides, divide by 7 pi to both sides, to simplify and get k third power by itself, well, always remember too that pi is uh, 3.14 to kind of save some time if you wish. If pi equals 3.14, and if you are multiplying this by 7, so 3.14 times 7 is going to be an approximate of right around, I would say, uh, over 21, right? It's going to be somewhere between 21 and uh, kind of like 22-ish. And, and if you're aware that this is between 21 and 22, well, it makes this math a little bit easier because then this becomes 22,704 over, right, right around, let's say, let's just say 22 to keep the number fair. I actually think the exact value is 21.98 if you were to multiply this out. So let's say 22, and you'll see why I'm, why I'm suggesting this in a second. Well, 22,704 divided by 22 is going to be above 1,000, right? Because if I know that 22,000 divided by 22 equals over, right, 1,000, then I know that this number being greater than 22,000 is going to mean that my answer is going to be a little bit above 1,000. And once again, I want to say that the actual answer is right around, uh, let's say, 1,032. If you were to plug this into a calculator, actually take the time to do the math. Now, why did I do all that? What was the purpose of knowing that k to the third power equals somewhere approximately around 1,000 to save me a lot of time plugging these things in? Well, if I know that my answer choice is right here in terms of k right to the third power, I'm thinking that k times k times k is going to be approximately 1,032. 1, well, you probably are aware that k to the third power, or something times something times something equals 1,000, the most popular number is 10, right? 10 times 10 times 10 gives you 1,000. And because your answer choices here are higher than 1,000, you, your k should be a little bit above 10, right? So your k value is actually going to be equal to, let's say, like 10 point something, right? It's going to be your approximation. And if I go back to my answer choices, it seems as though what is the value of k in centimeters? Well, yes, right? There's only one answer choice that's above 10, and it's going to be 10.11. I, I believe that the, the fastest way to do this problem is just to approximate 
So that way you can go through and you can say, okay, well, if I have 22 here, then if I were to divide, right, 22,704 divided by 22, that's going to be a little bit above 1,000. Well, 10 times 10 times 10 is going to be equal to that answer. And therefore, my best answer choice is going to be 9 is going to be D. Question 10 says, water pours into the glass slowly and at a constant rate. Which of the following graphs best illustrates the height of the water level in the glass as it fills, meaning that as it's coming up from the bottom and rising? And so here's your, your quick little diagram. If I were to dump water into this glass, then the water is going to quickly rise and then it's kind of going to level out. But you notice it's not going to rise as fast as it continues to increase. And that's only because there's more volume at the top of the cup than there is the bottom. The bottom of the cup is, is more narrow. So as I pour water into this cup, the water is going to increase steadily or increase rapidly in the beginning. So you should see a kind of a quick surge within your graph, which is represented by probably, probably C is probably the best so far. Um, a is definitely a quick surge, but then you'll notice that the water level is going to start to kind of tip off and it's going to start to plateau. It's not going to go anymore. So it's, it's not A all the way through because it's just going to keep rising. It's not B because that's more of exponential. So C is going to be your best answer for question 10.